On this episode, I'm building a low-profile floating deck under this garden pavilion. When I designed and built this pavilion, I wasn't sure what kind of deck I'd build under it, or if we'd have one at all. So I wasn't thinking about head clearance that much. When we decided to have a wooden deck, then the height of these two side beams became more important. With any deck I built, I wanted at least standard doorway head clearance under these beams. And that meant to get that 6 foot 9 clearance, the deck would need to be low profile. And that would mean I couldn't just have two footing supported beams with 2x6 or 2x8 joists and standard deck boards over that. So here's what I did. To keep the profile very low but with just enough ground clearance for ventilation, I chose 4x4s for the joists and to forgo any beams. And for each joist, I'd attach the galvanized joist hanger first, then pour three small concrete footings to support it. The first two joists would be leveled and laid on blocks while the concrete set up, starting on the south side and then to the north side on the other side of the pavilion pier. When these first two could support weight, I hung the middle joist over them. Then three more joists were hung and their footings poured. Then the final three. And this was done over several days, allowing the concrete to harden. And this method seemed to be the most manageable for me. With all the concrete done, I removed all the temporary 4x4 supports and added the 2x6 rim joists. The north side rim joist is cantilevered, so blocking was needed there. Finally, a few 2x4s around each pavilion pier complete the framing and fur 2x6 deck boards over that. This deck is roughly 12 by 14 So once I had the design down, it was time to remove the sod under the pavilion. We had an unexpected good run of weather for April, so we just had to go for it. I marked the lawn, then cut into the sod with an edger then continued with the edger in a grid to chop up the sod into small blocks. Then with a flat shovel we broke these away and into wheelbarrows. The sod was piled up and covered with a black tarp to kill off the grass, so we could then break it up and later add compost for topping up garden beds. I really needed to work off some excess stay-at-home COVID weight, so what better idea than to remove sod by hand? It was a long, tough afternoon, but in the end we got it done. I originally thought I'd mark and dig all the footing holes, assemble, level, and suspend the entire deck frame, then pour all the footings at once. And for a very small deck, this would be possible. But the weight of mine would be more than I wanted to handle solo, so I decided to start with one joist at a time. With the concrete piers of the pavilion to work around, I'd be using a shovel to dig the footings, instead of a post hole auger. There's just no room to pivot the handle. But this was okay, as our soil has basically no rocks and is soft this time of the year. Plus, I was only going down a foot and using 6-inch tubes. But I know there's 27 of these, so who am I kidding that this too would not be part of the spring deck weight loss project? I know the tops of the pavilion piers are all on the same level plane, so I use them as reference for the height of the first two joists. I attach the post brackets to the joist, and dropped a tube in each hole. I did think about using deck blocks set on the ground or a bed of gravel, but I didn't want the deck to potentially heave every winter. I just wanted to do this once, so I decided that I would pour a number of footings. A few stakes will hold the joist in place as I shovel concrete around and into the tubes. This corner is the high point, so there's not much clearance between the ground and the bottom of the joist. It made it a bit difficult to fill the tube. Because of this short ground clearance, I went with pressure-treated lumber for the deck frame. Okay. 
Then I will move over to the north end of the pavilion and repeat these steps for the second joist. These first two joists I cut to their final length, so I can quickly square them up before I add the infill joists. I rotate the concrete tubes on the miter saw to make it easier to cut. I cut these a few inches shorter to make filling them easier. I'll pull them up closer to the joist when they're nearly full. These are 6 inch diameter tubes and I figured that would be adequate since I have 27 footings in total. That's a lot of load sharing so even that might be more than what's needed. I set a screw in from each end of the first two joists to check for square, before I fill the concrete forms on that north joist. The piers from the pavilion were in the way of going corner to corner, so setting screws in an equal distance from the joist end worked well. I will reference the tops of the piers and check for level along the joist east to west. I'll also lay a 4x4 over these first two to check for level north to south. Now these are parallel and on the same level plane. The next day I'll add one of the middle joists. Now the framing is getting faster and easier. I'll suspend the joists from a 4x4 laid over my first two and I'll let the ends run long as I'll cut them all at once later. And the day after that I'll add three more joists. With the concrete set up I can now hang more joists at a time. Now, with all my joists secured to concrete footings, I can remove the support 4x4s. I'll snap a chalk line, then trim each joist. Then I can attach the 2x6 rim joists. And I can repeat this on the west side.
I messed up one joist and cut it too short, so I'll add a shim between the end of it and the rim joist. The rim joist on the north end is cantilevered past the 4x4 a few inches. I'll need to add some blocking to support it. This will hide the galvanized saddles from the 4x4 joist just behind it and give the deck that floating look. And now with the addition of a few 2x4s around the concrete pavilion piers, the framing is done. I have a stack of 2x6 fir boards that were milled from trees that were felled on our property. These have air dried for two years and will be used for the decking. They were cut one and a half inches thick so I can space my joists around 24 inches without worrying about any flex in these deck boards. This variety of fir, grand fir, is not known for its rot resistance. So I'll keep the deck within the drip line of the pavilion roof to try to keep the wood as dry as possible. Wood is expensive, so you have to sometimes use what you got. I have the stack of Grand Fur deck boards to prep before I can screw them to the frame. I'll be cutting a chamfer on their edges and sanding the saw marks left by the mill. I made a jig to make this faster and easier. Across two end-to-end -end saw horses, I attached a board with a slot in each end. This slot allows me to slide a clamp onto the board to secure them while I chamfer. This jig will give me full clearance for the power plane along each edge and the slot cut in the jig allows for variations in the length of the boards. I also trim one end square and chamfer it as well. So that was my entire day. One by one I prepped and sorted these boards. We picked up a yard of crushed gravel and shoveled and raked it under the frame. And that went pretty fast. I'm hoping that the gravel will help with drainage and dry faster under the deck. Quite a few of my deck boards were severely crooked. Oh, no. oh, boy. And being one and a half inch thick fur, they would be a challenge to straighten. But before I started laying them down, I wanted to apply a coat of stain first. And that finished off a long and productive day.
I'll need to notch the deck boards around the concrete piers, and I can do that with circular saw and jigsaw. I picked my straightest boards to get a good start with. I found some hooked metal bars to use as board spacers. At 3 16 thick, they were perfect for what I needed. I added a small block of wood to the looped part so they would stay in place while I ran in screws. At the beginning, I simply used a pipe clamp to straighten any boards with a mild crook. It took some time to get the cuts around the piers, so I had a slow start to the day. It didn't feel like I was making any progress until I could get into the middle section of the deck. And now I could tackle my first long crooked deck board. I screwed blocks to some angle iron that I could slide between the decking to give me a point to clamp to to straighten the boards. This board was pretty bad and I did the best I could with it. The gap at the end was still big, but once all the ends were trimmed later, I figured I could live with it. 
So I got halfway done on that first day, and I was liking how it looked. There were also some variations in the thickness between boards, but I didn't mind how it gave the deck a more rustic feel. And the chamfering helped. So the following day, it was just more of the same. I left the most crooked board for last. It was pretty severe, but now the deck had more integrity and strength, and I also had more confidence. I had a bottle jack in the garage, so I used it to straighten this one, and it worked well. Where the rim joist attaches to the 4x4 ends, I added some angle brackets. Later, I'll be adding a pony wall along this side of the deck, and I wanted a bit more support here. And it was easier to do this now instead of later. And now I was notching the boards around the east piers and doing some straightening with clamps. Even though I was using the GRK self-drilling screws, I like to drill pilot holes in the ends of the board. This ensures the screw will not cause a split. And these are the last two 2x6 boards I'll need. I'll be finishing off this side with a couple of 2x4s. The stain on those is still drying, so I'll move on to trimming the boards at the north and south ends of the deck. I had a long straight 1x8 that I can use as a guide to make this cut. And the random orbital sander for chamfers on all these ends. On the south end, the 1x8 ran into the concrete piers, so I used two 1x4s instead. And that is a very satisfying cut to make. And now I'll add the final two deck boards to complete the carpentry stage of this floating, low-profile deck. The fresh cut ends will get a few coats of stain. Along with the rim joists. And finally, the second coat of stain is rolled on, and this deck is finished. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Later this summer, I'll be adding a pony wall to the east side of the deck to block some of the consistent wind we get from that direction. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.